I find you, and it is your funeral. Come and get me! Come on! Hi everyone, Lesbian Mindplay here. Today we're going to be looking at the possibility of Mike being a target for Henry slash Vecna slash the Mind Flayer in Season 5. And all the hints in previous seasons, that was there. First, this theory came about based off logical conclusion. We know that Henry is after L, and he's also after Will, and the person closest to both of those characters is Mike, placing a big target on this character's back as the perfect one to get to both of these characters. From there, I looked at everything surrounding Mike in every single season to find hints to support this theory. This scene transition in season 2 to me is the biggest indicator that our main villain has taken a notice of Mike. This transition shows us that Mike is being watched by Will who is currently being possessed by Vecna, aka likely the Mind Flayer. And we can see this rapid eye movement that Will has in this scene and that was our first hint that this is being done by someone with power similar to how Elle was shown. So this is our indicator that this is connected to Vecna. And in season 2, we see Mike foil all these plans that the villain has set out through possessed Will. He spies back. We won't let him. We need to make Will sleep. He's a spy. If he knows where we are, so does the shadow He's monster. He's lying. <laughs> and then later on, we see this exact same hand that Mike touched and reached out to Will be the one that uses Morse code to tell them to close the gate. And then in season three, we see Mike once again plot out a plan that puts Billy, who is currently being flayed, inside of a sauna room, foiling his plans to get to Will and to get to Elle. How the hell, you piece of shit! And although Mike has a low self-esteem, there's no doubt that Mike has been the leader and kind of the hero of his group since the beginning. He may not have powers or be the most physically strong, but he has all these heroic moments that shows his character. Mike has a lot of heart, and that heart is a threat to Vecna, because it empowers both Elle and Will. Let's talk about the ominous imagery in Season 4. In particular, let's look at what we have for Max and compare it to Mike. As you know, Max became sort of a focus in Season 4 because she was targeted by Vecna, part of the four-person plot to open the gates into Hawkins. So knowing what we know about Max's story in Season 4, let's take a look at her at the guided counselor's office. And as you can see, this room alone has so much foreshadowing to Max's plotline in this season. Knowing this, we know that this type of imagery is going to show up for other characters as well. And the creepy stalkerish graffiti scene in the restrooms here is not the first time for Max. We also saw it in season 2. This is a boys restroom wall. As you can see, in this top left corner, there's a spider on a web. Spiders are associated with Henry. they are also the image that the Mind Flayer was formed into. And when the rest of the party comes into the restroom, you can see this is exactly where Max ends up standing in her blocking. Right below the spider on the web. So why am I bringing up Max's imagery for Mike? Because in season four, we see the exact same imagery for Mike. Once Mike and Will finally reunite, it immediately pops up behind Mike. As you can see here, this spider-shaped figure in the window. And I want to reiterate, a lot of this imagery can also be seen for Will as well, because you can see it as appearing at Will from this angle, or you can see it as them stalking Mike from behind him at this angle, depending on how you view it. Of course, Will already has that direct connection with the Mind Flayer slash Vecna, so it makes total sense as well. So in this scene in particular, Mike is acting very strangely towards Will, and I think he's hiding something. Because you'll notice, once Mike isn't looking at Will anymore, that imagery doesn't pop up in this scene again. And while as Mike is sneaking glances at Will every five seconds, once they mention the word friend and Angela, the number one pops up behind Mike. Your friend's gonna meet us there? Friends? What, what friend? And there's that number one right behind Mike's head. You know, Stacy and Angela. Angela? And once the name Angela is even mentioned, you can see that the number one is in full frame right next to Mike's head. And if you don't understand subtext, Mike is jealous of this mysterious girl that Will painted that painting for, which is why he acted weird at the airport. Now, whether or not you believe that Mike has any romantic feelings towards Will, you have to admit it's a bit strange that these Vecna imagery behind Mike specifically is popping up during these key moments between them. But let's look at some more in Season 4. Now, let's jump ahead a few episodes. Here we have Mike in a glass phone booth, and it looks pretty clean for a phone booth, right? But when it spins all the way around and after Mike and Will touch hands... You can see that there is a very, very blatant imagery of the Mind Flayer scratched into the window. This is much clearer than even the one in the airport, besides the one. This is super direct, and it's right above Mike's head. Again, calling back to that imagery we saw in Season 2 for Max. 
And this shared imagery about Vecna with Max does not even end there. To continue the looming imagery, we literally have Freddy Krueger with his claw behind Max. Of course, we know Nightmare on Elm Street was a huge influence for season four. This is confirmed by a Ross Stuffer interview. But that same claw imagery appears for Mike in season three. And while this shared imagery is crazy enough, it goes even further. It's the fact they chose to frame Max's flashback with Mike in the center of the screen. It's weird enough that they chose to start this flashback with Mike in the center almost as a focus before shifting over to Max, and then we see it again later on in the flashbacks. So let's guess what they're trying to tell the audience here. The first association we have is this literal flashback here, where Max is talking about her symptoms. Let's go over those symptoms really quick. Past trauma, terrible nightmares, difficulty sleeping, and headaches. Mike has a lot of past trauma, from losing Will to losing Elle to things literally dying in front of him. He's had a lot of trauma that he has not dealt with. Yeah, I mean, I never really unpacked. Next up is headaches, and headaches is a little bit harder to place. However, there are some moments where Mike is making faces that could be considered a headache, or he could just be frustrated. We don't know. And finally, terrible nightmares and difficulty sleeping. So we don't have evidence for nightmares, but we do have evidence for difficulty sleeping. Meaning it's likely he slept in, but we don't know for sure because we do not see the start of the season. There's also this dialogue from Karen that hints that he may not be sleeping well. You need to go to bed early tonight. Why? It's a 6.30 flight, Michael. Yeah, I know, but... We also don't know whether or not he was having bloody noses. However, we do see these two moments with both Patrick and with Max. It seems like this is the moment they're selected, but I'm not really sure because we see Patrick with the painkillers a little bit before this happens. It's unclear when the nosebleed occurs in this timeline of being in the curse, so we don't know for sure, but there is a possibility that Mike could have been the fourth victim but was simply out of town at the time. Regardless of the timelines, Mike is still the perfect victim to use as bait to get to Elle and Will. Next, we have this strange parallel between Max and her mother and two scenes for Mike. Notice the camera work is almost exactly the same. Max, so oh, sweetie. Promise. Nothing you don't deserve. And this is one of those parallels that kind of works for both Mike and Will again. But the fact that Max's mom and Hopper are wearing very similar shirts is really telling in this parallel. Now let's check out Mike's stalker shots, aka stalkerish camera angles that he's been having since season 1. A lot of these are a combination of him being around Elle and Will, so those ones I'm going to exclude for this video, but you can see the whole video on my YouTube. Let's focus on the ones where he is the main focus. This creepy camera angle is from behind the stairs, and you'll notice that it's zooming in on the three boys who are talking about what to do with Elle and to find Will. You'll notice that it pans directly onto Mike, who's in the center. Now that Elle's introduced, we have this creepy one from behind the bushes. But notice there's light in front of Mike drawing your attention to him. This creepy one behind the stack of stuff is focusing on Elle, but then you'll notice it also focuses on Mike, who soon becomes the center. Then from behind the stairs, we have this one that's staring directly at Mike, and only Mike. Another one from the stairs focused only on Mike. At the end of the season, we have this one from the shelf at Mike, who is directly in the center of the screen. In season 2, almost all of these stalker shots are with Will, and I think that's because specifically Vecna was going after Will at this point, now that he returned from the Upside Down. There's only one stalker shot in this season, and it's when they're eating breakfast. In season 3, almost all the stalker shots have Mike and Will in the scene, but for season 3, it mostly seems like he was checking up on Will. Season 4, the stalker shots seem to return to a focus on Mike, although Will does pop up in a few of them. Here's a focus on Mike's back in the center of this window. This one, I think, is focused on Mike and Will. This one has Mike, L, and Will in the center. Finally, this one's my favorite because you wouldn't know that this is a stalker shot for Mike unless you zoom in. So this is across the street from the gas station. And when you zoom in, you'll notice that only Mike is facing towards the camera. So what is the purpose of these stalker shots, these camera angles that give you the creeps? Well, one, it could be simply a stylistic choice. Judging off the fact that the Duffers love horror movies, they could just be taking inspiration from that. In season two, they mostly seem very narrative. As you can see, it's telling a story that Will is possessed and he's looking towards Mike. In season three, we also get that kind of ominous feeling. Like, even though we know Will isn't possessed anymore, 
because Will is almost always in those ominous looking shots looking at Mike. And in season four, it looked like a mix of artistic and also to be a little bit ominous, knowing that this is the season that they're hinting the most, that Vecna could be stalking Mike. Continuing with season four, we have Fred. So Fred is a new character who was introduced and he's the second victim of Vecna. The reason I'm bringing up Fred is because of the scar on his face, especially in this scene. You'll see how it starts to bleed. This is the exact same placement as Mike's in season three but you'll notice that they're mirrored. Again, it's just interesting that this is another example of when they're showing other victims, they're making you remember about Mike. And for Chrissy and Patrick, we can see that Chrissy has an eating disorder. Mike has trouble eating when he's upset, not necessarily an eating disorder. And with Patrick, we see he's being verbally abused by his father. You see Mike get yelled at a lot by his father, and also his father could be possibly homophobic. You see, Michael? See what happens? What happens when what? I'm the only one that cares about Will. Our son with a girl? <laughs> I personally don't think that Mike has an eating disorder, nor do I think he's being abused by his family. However, I do think if you look at the pattern of all four victims, Mike has elements of all of them. What does Mike have specifically? We already established that Mike has past trauma. But the other main thing that I think Vecna would go after is the fact that Mike is a closeted homosexual. Now, if you've never even considered that possibility, I have an hour-long video explaining every single detail that I could possibly find that hints about it, and specifically gay, because he has shown time and time again the lack of attraction towards girls and an active attraction towards boys. Even though Mike is currently dating a girl, that doesn't mean he can't be gay. In fact, that's a very common queer experience. Also, I think this will play a lot into how Vecna could go after him, but we're going to talk about that later. Hey, Michael, stop! Come on, Mike, please, don't be so stupid. It's suicide! The Peanut Butter Solution is a Canadian film that features on the season 4 DNA board released by the Stranger Things writers. It focuses on the main character, Mike, who goes into an abandoned house and has strange things happen to him afterwards, including losing his hair. The reason I wanted to bring up this film for this particular video is because it has things that are similar to Vecna visions. Take a look. Boarded up imagery is kind of like the prison of the mind in symbolism. This imagery is also introduced in the peanut butter solution as Mike's first nightmare. Oh, please, stop. Please, please let me alone. Don't get in. <laughs> That's another one of his nightmares, and you can kind of see it's going through his fears of life, having his painting destroyed by his teacher, things like that. Of course, this movie has a lot of parallels to not only Mike, because literally the main character is named Mike, but also Will, the character is abducted later on. There's a whole plot around that. So again, like I said, a lot of these Vecna things could be both characters, and I'm going to talk about Will's side of this in his video. So these Vecna vision parallels pop up in a lot of the films on the DNA board. The reason I wanted to point out this one is because it's specifically about a character named Mike, and it talks about a friendship to find said abducted character, which is very similar to season one. So I think this could have been a hint on the DNA board about who was the next possible victim of Vecna, which is going to be Mike. Now let's jump back to season three, where Mike taunts a flayed Billy, aka currently possessed by Vecna. Billy. Billy. Who's there? Billy. Billy. You think this is funny, huh? I find you, and it is your funeral. Come and get me! Come on! Hey, find you. Oh, 
this scene is going to come and haunt Mike Wheeler so much. And it kind of already does because this happens later. <laughs> Arguably, this could be some foreshadowing of the order of which these two are going to be attacked. Max was taken out first. Next is Mike. And these are done directly by Vecna, who is currently possessing Billy. Finally, let's speculate on how Mike could get Vecna. In fact, I believe that this locker room scene is giving us some hints. This sign right here in season 3, when Billy is going to find Mike, who is currently taunting him, focuses on the word men, which it does earlier for Mike. I have an idea, boys only. Seriously? Just trust me on this one. Beyond that career coded line of I have an idea, boys only, it zooms in on the men sign above the men's locker room. Of course, now we see Mike in the same room that he's going to taunting Billy in later on. And what does he discover behind the door? Not Billy, but sweaty old guys in a sauna. I think I just threw up in my mouth. I don't think those same guys are going to appear when he opens the door again in a Vecna vision, but I do think this theme that you see here in this locker room of guys working out, which we see again in season four, is going to return. Working out, locker rooms, wrestling, these are all extremely common ways to queer code a character in queer cinema. It's nothing sexual at all, it's literally just a way to say, this character could be queer, and it's especially more predominant when it's in a film or TV show where working out isn't the main focus. It's kind of out of place, and it usually means something symbolically, and most of the time, it's queer coding. Season 3 is literally all about puberty, and this is a totally normal part of puberty for queer youth. I suspect if we see a Vecna vision, we're gonna see this locker room again, because locker rooms tend to be a place where queer youth is bullied. It's actually pretty common. Even I was bullied as a teenager in the locker room because people assumed I was predatory and that I was looking at other girls the whole time. You can see a modern example of this in Heartstopper. This is in no way a new concept. This is something that's been happening for generations. I have some books from queer youth in the 70s that were talking about these same exact type of bullying. So when we see Mike taunting Billy in season three, I really do think that this whole element's gonna come back, especially because they focused on that men sign and that fact that it's locked and it can't get out of there. I have a feeling that Vecna is metaphorically gonna out Mike from the closet, meaning he's going to tell the audience, us, the viewers watching, about Mike's sexuality before it's revealed to other characters on the screen. I shared this part of the theory with several others because if you look at the themes of our queer characters so far, Robin came out to Steve and was accepted. She was accepted by a friend. And with Will, his brother basically knows what is going on and has shown his love and support for him for knowing that he is gay. So again, we have friends and family positive. What we haven't seen yet is a negative. Negative experiences like outing does happen in real life with queer youth. And it fits the themes of Vecna. Vecna is the type of monster to go after your fears. He goes deep into your conscience, finds out what you feel most guilty of. For Mike, that's likely being in a relationship with Elle for so long and knowing his sexuality. He's realized it by the end of season 3. He has that past trauma we touched upon. And Mike changed his entire personality in season 3 to conform to what he thought society wanted him to be. Instead of dating somebody because you think it's going to make you cooler, why not date somebody you actually enjoy being around? All these conflicted feelings and the guilt that Mike must feel for the way he treated others, especially in season 3, is probably eating away at him right this very moment. Based off the hints we've seen so far, some other possible places we could see it are where those Vecna imagery I showed you earlier showed up. The first place is the airport. The second is a phone booth. And phone calls relate to Mike and Will's relationship specifically because they argue about phone calls. And, of course, Billy in the locker room. And finally, what I didn't point out earlier... There is a Vecna imagery here on the disco ball in Wrinkle Mania, but I think that scene is more likely going to show up for Will than it will for Mike. But I wanted to bring it up because it does go over Mike's head at the end of the scene, so it could be for both characters. I totally see that happening as this was a very dramatic moment for both. And thus concludes why I think that Mike Wheeler is the perfect target for Vecna in Season 5. Of course, I have additional thoughts on other characters and how they could go about that. I do not think it's going to be the same as Season 4 where we had the Vecna's curse and the slow descent into killing. I think rather it's going to be taunting and using Mike as bait to either bring Will or Elle or both to him. But let me know your thoughts. How do you think Vecna is going to go about 
getting to Mike? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye, nerds!